Hi, Eurovision fans, welcome to a new video. It's the end of October and there's a lot going on in the world of Eurovision. It feels like even more than usual for this time of year, which is great. We know all the countries taking part. We know Armenia and Montenegro are both coming back. We know who's representing Belgium and even the UK, they don't usually say anything until February, January, but even they have come out and given us some information. <laughs> so I am going to be doing a what we know so far kind of update video and I'm going to do it in two parts, going through all the countries in alphabetical order and if I do it all in one go it'll be a lot. So I'm going to go in order alphabetically and I'll get to about Latvia, Lithuania and then I'll stop and then there'll be a part two for the other countries. But first of all, I want to make an apology to one of my fellow YouTubers, RAJC or Reese Chambers, because he's literally just uploaded this type of video literally <laughs> before I started filming and I just want to promise <laughs> that I just hope it doesn't make it seem like I copied because I did have this video planned all week. So go and watch his video and go and watch his video about the UK as well. That's a good one. So yeah, I just wanted to put that out there. I made another video a few weeks ago about what I would like to see at Eurovision from different countries. And in this video, I'll probably mention some of that again as well and maybe even do a few predictions just for fun as well. So this video will be just a huge mashup of what we know so far, any rumours and speculation, what I would like to see, and some predictions of what I think could happen. Oh, and also, um, I think we should just point out about Manaskin, our champions. They've performed in America on the Jimmy Fallon show, and they're going to be opening for the Rolling Stones in Vegas. And that is just incredible. It really is amazing what they're doing. This never happens in Eurovision, but it's happening to them. And yeah, it's just amazing. It really is Manuskin world domination, and we love to see it. I also still can't believe that 2021 is now over, and we're now starting completely new and it literally feels like a month ago that Manuskin won and now we've got completely new artists, it's just a completely new Eurovision season but it was just, it just happened so quickly and it just, yeah, it really doesn't seem like long ago at all that we had the final of 2021 but here we are, I can't wait for a new season um, and there's lots of national finals this year even more than last year, obviously because of the pandemic and because of all the returning artists from 2020, there were a lot less national finals. But now there's even more, you know, some new ones as well, which we'll get to in time. <laughs> uh, but first of all, let's start with Albania. Always have the national final in December, the end of December. So they are always usually the first country to give us their entry before the end of the year. Although there is another country this year that are also they're having the national final in December. So we could be getting two songs before the end of the year, but we'll get to that later. Uh, yeah, Albania, we should be knowing any day now who will be taking part in Albania's national final. So we should hear about that very soon. We've also just found out yesterday, oh, I should say, I'm filming this on the 28th of October, by the way, uh, we found out about Australia's national final. The final is on the 26th of February. And yesterday we found out the first three people taking part. I think there's about 10 or 12 altogether. Um, so we found out the first three people. I imagine they'll reveal more of them over time. Uh, one of them is Azaya, who represented Australia in 2017, and there's a few other returnees as well. 
but yeah, the final is in February. There's only about 10 or 12 songs, which sometimes I actually prefer. Sometimes I prefer the short, quick national finals to the really long ones that have loads of quarterfinals, semifinals. Sometimes they go on for too long. So it's a nice, quick, straight to the point, one night final. Azerbaijan and Austria, we don't usually hear from them until the new year and they usually have an internal process. So I don't think we'll hear much from them yet. Uh, but Armenia, as we know, are coming back and there's a lot of excitement about that. And I'm excited as well. I'm glad that Armenia are back because if you think of their entries from over the years, they've got some really good songs. And I feel like, or maybe I expect good things from them. I hope they're going to come back with a bang. And if I'm going to make a prediction, like I said that I would, but you know, just for fun, they could be ones to watch this year. They could come back with something really good. They could, you know, even be a favourite, but that's all just speculation for now. Um, but I do have quite high expectations from them. And as we know, Athena Minukian, I think her name is, she was supposed to represent Armenia in 2020 and this year as well. So she's missed out on two years. So you just think, surely it should be her to represent Armenia because she's missed out on two years in a row. Obviously, if she doesn't want to, then that's fair enough. But surely they have to at least ask her. It makes sense. Uh, but yeah, I'm looking forward to seeing what they do, even if it's not Athena. Belgium, like I said at the start, we know the artist. It was revealed in September, which felt really early, even for Belgium. I know, I remember with Hoover Phonic, that was revealed fairly early, but I think it was October, but September, yeah, that's really early. Uh, his name is Jeremy Maquies. Um, he won The Voice in Belgium this year, I think, and he's a footballer as well. Um, the song won't come out for a few months yet. Uh, I think, judging by what he does on The Voice, I think it'll probably be a ballad. The question is, will it be in English or French? If I had to guess, I'll say probably English for some reason. Uh, but again, Belgium, they could be ones to watch as well. You never know. You know, I've got a feeling they could turn things around. Uh, he's got a good voice as well, but we'll find out in due course. Bulgaria, we don't know anything yet. I do wonder, again, you know, are they going to want revenge, <laughs> if you can call it that, for not doing as well with Victoria last year as was expected. I think they're going to want to come back even stronger. And Bulgaria, you know, we've said this before, they really are, they've turned things around over the past few years. They're really climbing up that ladder and it feels like they want to win. So again, we could get something really strong from them again as well. Croatia are having their national final in the new year and also the Czech Republic we mentioned earlier it's usually Albania who are the first to reveal their entry and their national final but this year Czech Republic are having their national final in December as well around about the same time as Albania and also apparently Nicholas Joseph who gave the Czech Republic the best ever the highest ever result in 2018, has apparently submitted a song for the national final. So we could be seeing him again represent the Czech Republic if it's good. Um, I also, I believe that it's going to be a slightly different format because usually when they've done it last year, well, 2020 and the year before, it was all done by music videos and people voted on the song online. But now it looks like there's going to be live performances, so a live TV show that people can vote on. So that should be interesting. Yeah, I'm looking forward to that. Um, but yeah, I'm looking forward to that and I'll make some reaction videos as well. Now Cyprus, there's been a few bits of information you may have heard about Cyprus. First of all, they've said that they want to have more Cypriot involvement rather than Greek 
kissing a purely Greek focus. Um, we don't know if that means that they want somebody from Cyprus to actually represent them, or if they mean they just want more Cypriot involvement in general, maybe with the songwriting. So could this mean that they're trying to move away from the whole Fuego replay kind of path that they've been on? Are they going to do something different? I think that would be good if they could, because as much as we all love Fuego, it can't go on forever. Um, or it could just be another bop, which is fine. Uh, but there's also been this story that you may have heard online about George Michael. <laughs> Obviously, George Michael passed away a few years ago. But there was this report from someone, I can't remember, that they want somebody to represent Cyprus with an unreleased George Michael song. I don't really know if I believe that anyway, but also, can they do that? Because even though the song is unreleased, it's not original, because it is a George Michael song. I, I, I just don't know if that would be allowed, but I'm not, I'm not sure if I really believe that story anyway. But yeah, if you don't know, there is this rumour that they want a man to represent them, to sing an unreleased George Michael song, but who knows. <laughs> Denmark and the Melody Grand Prix, the final is on the 5th of May. 5th of March, sorry, not May, that would be too late. Yeah, 5th of March. Uh, let's hope it's better than this year, because that was bad this year. It was not great at all. Let's hope the quality has improved. I do find that Denmark's Melody Grand Prix is never as good as Norway, from what I've seen. Um, but yeah, let's hope it's better this year. We don't really know anything about who could be taking part. I'm sure we'll find out soon. Now, Estonia, Esti Lau, are having a huge national selection process. It seems a bit too much for me. They've got quarterfinals, semifinals. It actually starts in November, so we should be hearing the songs very, very soon. Um, and the final is in February. So it goes on for a long time might be a bit unnecessary, maybe. Um, or maybe, you know, they're trying to show off Estonian music, which is which is good, but it does sound like a lot, all these quarterfinals and semifinals. Um, they've had over 200 entries. Um, some of them are in Italian and French and Spanish, I think. And there's also some in a made-up language, so that should be interesting. And they've said that some of the people who applied are people who have been to Eurovision before and represented Estonia. So could this be, we'll have someone like Victor Krone come back? Well, there's going to be some people returning, so that should be interesting. I, I will try and follow it and watch some of it. I might not keep up with everything, especially because it is so long, <laughs> but we'll see. Now, there are some countries that did so well this year that makes me think, I think I've mentioned this before, it makes me wonder how they can top that and do even better than that. One of them is Finland. Blind Channel did brilliantly well last year. So what will Finland do now? Well, they're having the national final, as usual, in the new year, probably sort of January, February time. Um, we don't know who's taken part, uh, but there is something that I've read, I'm not sure if it means that much, but it's quite interesting. There's a rock singer from Finland called Andrea Brosio, um, and he, he was actually born in Turin, which is hosting next year, and he has, I looked at his social media when I found out about him, and he has mentioned he's happy about the fact that Eurovision has been hosted in his hometown, his home city. And he's also done a cover of The City of Bronny by Manskin, which is on YouTube and on his Instagram as well. So that, that just fits together perfectly, doesn't it? It 
it seems like a good op opportunity that's just right there in front of you. He's a rock singer from Finland, but his home city is Turing. He's done a cover of Maraskin, and yeah, could he have submitted a song for the national final? Maybe he didn't. Um, but no, it's just something interesting to mention, something to look out for. But other than that, we don't know who's going to try for Finland this year. I fully support more rock at Eurovision, not just from Finland, but any country. I am a supporter of rock at Eurovision officially. Let's have even more of it this year. And we probably will get some more rock this year. I don't mind which country it's from. So another national final is France. Another one that I'm really looking forward to because I really liked the national final last year. There's two songs that I still listen to all the time. There's Magic by LMK and Alleluia by Andrea Mad. So I'd like to see at least one of them return. I do wonder as well if there'll be other people returning from last year. And again, I've got a good feeling about this as well. If it's as good as last year, hopefully. Um, again, we don't know anything about it yet, apart from the fact it will happen in early in the new year, because I think it was in early January last year. So we may even find out who's taken part in December, maybe. So there's Germany. Uh, we don't really know anything about Germany, um, although they'll probably go through a similar internal selection process as last year. Let's just hope that they improve on last year. And you never know with Germany, they're quite unpredictable, very up and down. Every few years, like 2018, they come out with something really good and they got fourth place in 2018 and then they went all the way back down again the next year. So you never know with them, you know, they, they could be a contender this year, you just don't know. Um, let's just hope they improve on last year. And there's also Georgia, who we don't know anything about either. They haven't withdrawn, they are still taking part, even though, I mean, you know, realistically, at the moment, they are one of the worst performing countries in Eurovision. Um, they need to go back to 2015, 2016, that kind of level. Um, two good songs in a row. Uh, so who knows what they're going to do this year. I want to talk about Greece because we do actually know quite a bit of information about Greece. The information is there if you look for it and I've actually been following it quite closely this year for some reason. Um, it is an internal selection but we do actually know who has submitted a song for Greece. There's about, I think they had 25 applicants all in all. Uh, but some of them sent more than one song, so there were 25 who applied with about 40 songs in total. Um, and one of them was Kalamira, who represented Greece in 2008, but then she, at the last minute, she withdrew. Um, and there's a few other names as well, a singer called Evangelina, or Evan Evangelia, who has submitted a song for both Greece and Cyprus, so you never know, she could represent Cyprus. Um, there's also a singer called Good Job Nikki, um, who seems to be, when you read on social media, it seems to be one of the favourites. Um, not very Greek sounding, but I've listened to his music when I found out about him. Very interesting, very kind of reminds me of Loic Noté from Belgium, John's Tears, Christian from Bulgaria. In terms of, of Eurovision, he gives me that kind of vibe. So I really can imagine him at Eurovision. Have a look on YouTube, good job, Nicky. Um, he's got a few songs and he has put forward a song for Eurovision and he is a favourite, so we could well be seeing him at Eurovision. Um, and again, I have got a good feeling about Greece this year, for some reason, I just think they could be ones to watch. They've got, you know, a lot of big names that put themselves forward. Um, there's a lot going on that we should find out very soon who it will be. 
Um, but yeah, I got a good feeling about them as well. Okay, moving on, I'm nearly there, don't worry, <laughs> to Iceland. Another country that I just think, where are they going to go from here? They've had Darby Freer and Hatari two years in a row. Where do, where do they go from there? Like, How can you top that? How many other quirky groups are there in Iceland? Um, I honestly don't know what to expect from the national final this year. Um, I hope it's good. Um, I just can't help but feel like they might have peaked, unfortunately, with Darby. You know, how do they get better than that? I'd love to be proven wrong. Um, we'll wait and see. I would like... That's my cat. <laughs> I would like to hear some Icelandic sounding kind of like folk music, something really, really Icelandic, but also modern. I've said this before in other videos, you know, like of Monsters and Men, something like that, but also very, yeah, contemporary, but Icelandic. Uh, that's what I'd like to see and what lots of other people would like as well, but we'll wait and see. Ireland are also having a national final this year. Last time they had a national final was probably about 10 years ago, maybe even more, before I was actually a proper fan of Eurovision, I think. Um, could this be a good thing? Maybe. I'm expecting lots of male ballads. I'm expecting lots of men with guitars at this Irish national final, I have to say. Um, don't know why. Um, I hope it's good. I'm I'm interested and I will do some reaction videos to that definitely. Um, I believe the submissions closed a few days ago um, and it will take place, we don't, we don't know when exactly, but in the new year at some point. Israel are having the X Factor Israel, which I believe starts really really soon in a few weeks i think um and that will choose who will represent israel at eurovision italy san remo wow i mean good luck with following on from monsking <laughs> um there's going to be lots of eyes on san remo this year they are the host country they finally won deserved um and you know, lots of people talk about Italy winning again. If a country was to win twice in a row, I think it would be Italy. They would be the ones to do it. But, it, you know, we don't know that yet. I can't see them doing even better than my skin. That would be absolutely very impressive <laughs> to, you know, to do even better than my skin. Uh, can't see that happening, but I'm so glad that they finally won, uh, especially with that as well. Uh, you know how much I love City of Bongi, I keep going on about it, but oh, I love them so much. Um, so what will Italy give us this year? Well, I mentioned in a video before from what I would like to see happen. Uh, I would like the Colors to return. And there was a list of rumoured contestants, and the Colors are on that list. So apparently they will take part in San Remo again this year. So, going from Manskin to the Colors, that would be great, I'm here for that. Um, I don't know if there's other people returning, like Ermal Meta, or Francesco Gabani, or Elodie. Um, but can't wait to find out what we're going to see at San Remo this year. I believe the final is in March, but we will find out who has taken part in December. When I mean finally won, of course, I mean finally won again, because they did win in 1990. But, you know, they deserve to win at least twice over the past 10 years, let's be honest. Um, so, I think... I'm going to end it there. 
because I've I've gone through so many countries um, and I've still got so many more to go through, including the UK, which will come right at the end in part two, which will be here in a few days. So stick around for that. Have I missed any countries? I'm just going for the alphabet. There was I, so Ireland, Israel, Iceland, Italy. Yep, I've done all that. Um, so thank you for watching and for sticking with me for the whole thing. Um, as always, any comments you have, any opinions on anything I've said or haven't said, please leave them in the comments below. And I will see you very soon for part two. So thank you for watching. See you then. Bye.